Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. I hope you had a great weekend. It was Mother's Day weekend. Today, we are going to start with an artist who I really enjoy, but didn't know that much about. So we're going to kind of learn about him together. But let's sing our hello song first. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Well, a while back, I was with a second grade class at almost elementary school. And I want to say a, a special thank you to three students, two who sent me birthday cards, Hannah and Sovanita. Thank you very much for the birthday cards. And Gerardo, your excitement about the art lessons was so exciting for me, and I just wanted to thank you for being such a great student and for helping me as I stayed in your classroom for two days. So now, I want to say, since it is Monday, it is Mystery Monday, and I have three things in my suitcase I'm going to bring out, and you're going to figure out right away what kind of artist our artist Charlie Harper is. So let's take a look. First thing I'm getting out is this. Now this is something from my collection. This one hangs outside in my yard. But this is a birdhouse. No birds have moved in or I wouldn't have brought it because you don't bother someone's home to show people something. So this is my birdhouse. So that's hint number one about Charlie Harper. Let's look at the second thing. And you might have seen this the first week that we started this show. It's a little twig with a nest and an egg in it. All right, so now we have a birdhouse and we have a nest. My third thing is this book. Why would I bring this book? And look, I even have a post-it note on it so I can tell you the five birds that we're going to look at this week. So. The first one is today's bird, and there's no sound in the book for it. And part of the reason I think it is because this book is the sounds of backyard birds. And this bird doesn't even, you don't really see them in North America very much or actually on the West Coast. And it's a cardinal, and it's red, but it makes a little sound like this. It goes, choo, 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 choo. So when I wrote the song about this bird, I put those words cheer cheer in it. And I will play this for our song tomorrow when we meet the robin. But let's talk about Charlie Harper for a minute. Charlie Harper, this is what he looks like. And what reminded me of him and Mr. Rogers is they're both wearing red sweaters. And Charlie Harper is no longer living. He um, passed away in 2007. But I wanted you to know he grew up on a farm. So he became really um, friends with birds and animals. And he didn't want to be a farmer. And in fourth grade, he was drawing. And he realized as he looked around at his classmates' drawings that his were the best. And he thought, well, when I grow up, I think I'll be an artist, and an artist who does illustrations. And we know when we read books aloud in class, your teacher says, who is the author? Who is the illustrator? Well, the illustrator, we all know, is the person who does the drawings for the books. But they also can do drawings and artwork for note cards. Sometimes you can get a Charlie Harper calendar with all of his animals. And he doesn't just do birds. He does woodland animals. He does ocean animals. So if you see anything that looks like a cut and paste kind of bird or animal, you'll think, I wonder if that's Charlie Harper. And you can look and see if his signature is there. So what else did I want to tell you? Oh. 
He went to school in Cincinnati, and that's where he met his wife, Edie, and she was also an artist. And they got married, and I'll tell you more about his life as we go on during the week. But right now, if you have yourself ready, you, this is a funny thing. I'm not going to tell you each day, bring this tomorrow, bring this tomorrow like I usually do, because this week everything is going to be cut and paste and drawing with black permanent pen. So every morning when you get ready to watch the show, have a variety of colors of paper, or if you only have white paper, or if you only have the back side of a paper bag, that works too. So just any kind of paper you have. And we're going to cut and paste birds, but I also saw one that had been done as a rubbing and I want to show you how you can do that, even with the drawing and cutting and pasting that we do with the cardinal today. Let's take a look at Charlie Harper's cardinal that I have on the pocket chart. His cardinal looks like this this time. He's done so many cardinals, cardinals that are flying, cardinals that are sitting. This cardinal is about to eat. And he, the birds really like sunflower seeds. There's something in it that makes them so happy. It's like their favorite food. If you ever have a bird feeder and you have different kinds of seed in the bird feeder, the ones that go missing first are the sunflower seeds because the birds think it's like candy or like dessert. So let's look at this cardinal. Its shape is like a teardrop. Now, if you can draw a teardrop, great. If you can't, you can always draw a circle with a triangle on top. And you can think, if Mrs. Readwright is making one that's too hard for you, you just look for the shapes, just like I've taught you before. It's a circle with a triangle. And where else is a triangle? It's tail. It's legs. He always makes these skinny little legs, and he makes all your knees like a, just a polka dot. And all around, you can see this bird has bird footprints all around this bird. And if you want, after you make your red bird, you want to put it on a piece of paper and put sunflower seeds and footprints, you can. And does your bird have to be red? No. But if you want it to look just like a cardinal, yes. So let's get started with our art after I sing this song to you. It goes like this. I wrote it to the sound of the cardinal. It goes like this. Whose songs are those? The cardinal, can you hear? It sounds as though he's having fun. He sings to us, cheer, cheer. Cheer, cheer. Cheer, cheer. Whose songs are those? It's the cardinal. All right, let me set down my clipboard. Get my table up. Boys and girls, I wanted to remind you while I'm thinking. If you're making the art with me and you think you would like to send me a photograph of it or of you doing the art, I would love it. And I could um, make sure you send your home address and you can get a, a book from here from PBS. They're so generous. Okay, let me get my table and move this paper up. Look at all I have today. I did bring orange. I may not use it, but this is my background. I'm using blue and this is the bird red. So if you have these things, terrific. If not, you can just draw them as we cut and paste them. And I think I will use my clipboard as my inspiration and maybe I'll bring the big, big one down for you to look at as we work. Now, when I made this with a, some young children, they loved having a little template, which means it's a pattern that um, you can just trace around. But I don't provide templates to children because I think if you want a template, you have to make it yourself because otherwise my template means my work. So I don't want to give children my work. I want them to do their own. So I just brought a piece of paper, plain white paper that came out of my printer so that I could make myself a template if I decide. So I'm going to see how big I want to make it first. Because if I want my bird to be fit on this paper, I want to make sure that I have room for the um, triangle tail too. So if you're going to make that teardrop, you can make a circle as best you can, or you can trace around the bottom of a cup or something. And then I'm gonna go up. I want to put a little dot where I want the um, head to stop. So then I'm going to curve the line up and curve the line up to that point. Now I see one side looks a little better to me than another. I'm going to trace around this with my black pen so you can see what I mean about 
one side looks better than the other. And see, I'll put it next to this so that you can see, does it look like that? Oh, it really kind of does. But let me do this and you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna do a little curve line down around this and curve up and I'll show you. Which side do you think looks better? This one or that one? I think this one does. So what I'm going to do is fold it, get, make sure that little point is right there on the edge and fold it down. Now I say to myself, well, this will be a good template because both sides will be the same or symmetrical. I know we've been talking about symmetrical and being something um, in symmetry. It means one side is the same as the other. When we talked about butterflies, and said how one side of a butterfly, if you put that on this side, you have to do it on that side. Okay, I look at this and say, oh, that looks pretty good. Now, you remember what I tell you. Put your piece close to the edge so then you have all of this extra paper. If I do this, I have a little here and a little here and a little here and a little here. And that doesn't um, make you have extra scraps. So I put it as close to the edge as I can. Plus, it's so much easier to cut something out that is near the edge. Let me go around this and go around this. And I will quickly cut this out because we sure don't want to run out of time because the face is the part that you really were going to want directions. I cut, oh look, I'm just going to cut it off because remember I told you when you have extra paper hanging off, it's hard to do. And now I've got my curve over here, perfect. I may not put it on my blue paper and get it glued on right away, but I will put him there. Now I need to do, oh look, this little piece that's left over looks like it might be a perfect, perfect tail. No, maybe too big. But boys and girls, let's get the face on. It goes like this. I have to put, a straight line across, and a U underneath. I'm going to do another place across, go up and down for its beak, and up and down for its beak. Its eye is out here, and its eye is out here. This way, I have this on here. I'm going to put it on here and show you his legs go down with his little kneecap and his legs go down with his kneecap. I will color in this mask on his face. And if I want to color in the beak later with orange, or I can cut and paste a beak and put it on there. I'm gonna finish coloring this in, but I wanted you to see straight down will be his wing. And it has a little fan of feathers like this. Put this one down. We got finished so quickly today, I think, because I showed so many things from the suitcase. Boys and girls, you finish this up, and I will finish it up, and we will see you tomorrow when we learn about the robin. So bring the same kind of materials. See you then, boys and girls. Thanks for joining me today. brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone.